Well, people will continue to log on probably here for the next, where this is a, this is a diverse group. And from my experience, um, um, people come late sometimes, but we'll get started. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Rod Sherensel. I um, am a pastor. Uh, I pastor a four church district in Southeast Kansas. And I'm also the men's ministry director for the conference. Um, and uh, when we got started here, normally, normally for the men's ministry, we have um, a direct, let's, let's see, let's just mute everybody. Right oh. here. Okay. Normally, uh, every year we have a uh, You muted yourself there, Rod. <laughs> when it says mute everybody, it means mute everybody, doesn't it? <clears throat> so usually every year um, we have a retreat at Broken Arrow Ranch and we've had to cancel it two years in a row now because of the pandemic. So I was trying to think of something that we could do for, um, for the men and uh, I started talking with a friend of mine and, um, and we started setting up this series of meetings. And then I said, to, I said, Ron, this is, this is too good to just confine to men. This is gonna apply to women and to, to children and to families and everything else. So the short version of the story is that um, I contacted Sue Carlson and, uh, and Tim Floyd and um, that's how this all came about. So uh, I'm glad you're here, I'm glad everybody's here. And, and uh, in order to make this come about, it didn't just take the few of us. Uh, there are people who really, really deserve big thank yous. Uh, the administrative uh, team in the office um, helps to pull this together. They never get thank yous, you know, they're always behind the scenes. But I wanna say thank you to Cheryl Barker and Stephanie Gottfried um, who helped with this and Tim Floyd, who, who's the youth director. He did the video work. And one person who gets one of the biggest thank yous of all is Sue Carlson because um, she gets a huge thank you because she is not only, um, she, she is responsible for three different departments, children's and, and family life and women's ministries. And since she's in the office in Topeka, she carried a lot of the extra workload here. And uh, um, she did some of the things that normally some of the office staff do for me in men's ministry. So I just wanna say thank you to Sue for all the hard work she has done during uh, the preparation here, so making, making the, the handouts and, and doing the mailings and so forth. Now, if you're new to Zoom, I know that so there'll be some here who are new to Zoom, we'll do the very best we can to help you. Sue and I will both be monitoring the chat box and you'll become familiar with the chat box if you, if you aren't already. And if you have some questions, you can use that chat dialog box um, to contact either Sue or me directly. You can click and just pick our name and contact us directly. Or during the question and answer period, you can post your questions to the entire group there. There's another, there's another fixture called raise your hand. Your hand. It's, down, it's down in the um, emoji list there. And you can raise your hand during the question and answer time. It's at the bottom of your screen. And hopefully one of us will see it. If we don't, then, then jump up and down and wave your hands and get our attention that way. Hopefully you have gotten your handouts um, and you received them by email. If you didn't, Sue, have you posted those yet in the box down below? No, she hasn't posted them. Sue's going to post them in the bottom right-hand corner in the chat box. If you didn't get your handouts, they're, they're, um, they will pop up and you click on them and you can either save them to your, to your computer or you can click those little dots to the right and uh, you can either download them or you can open them up or you can read them right on your screen. And uh, there are, there are uh, handouts for children too, action sheets. And depending on the age of your child, you can either use these during the meetings uh, or you can use them after the session, but regardless, you can debrief with your, with your children uh, afterwards. And the parental instructions are attached to those children hand, children's hands out. And again, if you, um, if you have any questions, just contact us and we'll either give you the answer or we'll make something up for you, okay? Um, Ron, 
Price. Uh, I met him when I was pastoring in southwestern Colorado. And I also had a church in northern New Mexico. And I, I liked him from the, from the day I met him. Don't tell him that, it'll get a big head. But I liked him from the day I met him. He's smart, I, he's, he's personable. And uh, um, I, I went to a seminar one time that, that he put on and, and really enjoyed it. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about him. He, he's an author, a speaker, a humorist. Um, he was actually uh, born Jewish but he gave his life to Jesus back in 1979. Um, and he is a solid Christian. Uh, he has a BA degree in sociology from the University of Rhode Island and an MA uh, degree in counseling from U University of New Mexico. He's authored three books called Play Nice in Your Sandbox, Play Nice in Your Sandbox, at, Play Nice in Your Sandbox at Work, Play Nice in Your Sandbox at Home, and Play Nice in Your Sandbox at Church. He lives with his wife, Maridel, who recently retired, 36 years as a registered nurse. Um, she worked, and uh, they recently, in December, I think, Ron Wright uh, celebrated 40 years of being married to, this, to the same spouse. They don't have any children, but they um, have had a host of dogs, and in, and, and, um, and in my opinion, way too many cats, but then, although I love animals of all kind, one cat for me is uh, way too many to have in a home. Um, he serves as a big brother there in Farmington, I think, right? Uh, I have, I have, not uh, presently, but yeah. yeah. To a number of, uh, of, of boys who need uh, some guidance. And uh, since 1997, Ron has owned and operated a, a Productive Outcomes, which is primarily a speaking and training and dispute resolution practice. He's, uh, he has amassed over the years uh, 700 hours of continuing education, mostly in fields that, that I appreciate myself, overlapping fields of uh, facilitation, mediation, and relationship skills building. He's also a solid Christian. He's a leader in uh, his local church, the Pinion Hills Seventh-day Adventist Church in Farmington, New Mexico. And uh, he is a member of the Rocky Mountain Conference Executive Committee. So um, without any further ado, I think, Ron, uh, it would be befitting for us to open with prayer. And then I'll just turn it over to you. Let's pray, shall we? Lord, thank you for, so much for this opportunity that we have to come together and learn. We need our skills to have relationship with you um, buoyed up. And, and we need it strengthened. We also need the skills to develop and, and build better relationships with each other strengthened. So I pray that you will visit us tonight with your spirit and that you'll be with Ron as he presents to us tonight some skills that we can use in real life. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Well, Rob, thank you for that introduction. I appreciate it. It sounds familiar. It sounds almost like I wrote it myself, but you, you read it well, so thank you for that. You know, one thing Rod didn't tell you is I've been a mediator for over 30 years. For over 30 years, I have put myself between people who are at odds with each other. And if that doesn't tell you I'm a sick man, I don't know what will. So hold on a second. I'm not, I don't know why I don't see myself. Uh, I'm recording, but Rod, I see you and not me. Rod, can you mute perhaps for the moment? And let's see if I'll show up on the recording. I, I, I am muted. I was muted until I just now unmuted. Well, all right. I'm going to go to gallery view then. We'll see how that works. Oh, now I can see everybody. Hello, everybody. For over 30 years, I have put myself between people who are at odds with each other. And if that doesn't tell you I'm a sick man, I don't know what will. But it's always a great joy to watch people come into my office bitter, hostile, adversarial, and leave not necessarily best buds, but at least the, the dispute has been diminished somewhat. They're able to view each other differently and, and hopefully work together to resolve their differences. It's, it's been a fun ride, I promise you. But I developed something I call CPR. CPR stands for Conflict Prevention and Resolution. 
can also stand for create positive relationships. And you know as well as I do that conflict is inevitable. We are going to have conflict in our lives so long as we're dealing with other people who are no more perfect than we are. But like I always say, conflict may be inevitable. Damaged relationships are optional because I fully believe that many conflicts can and should be prevented. Many conflicts can and should be resolved. So conflict doesn't have to be a negative experience. Most of us think it is. You, you survey people. In, in fact, right now, let me see. Raise your hands if you love conflict. Let me see the hands of the liars in the audience. Yeah, thank you. I'm not seeing any hands go up. I, I think I saw a statistic, 67% of Americans say they dread conflict. They, they do everything they can to avoid conflict and yet that's wasted energy. You, you can't do it and most often you shouldn't. Now preventing and avoiding are not the same thing. But you can think of conflict in a sense as the absence of peace. And those of us who know Jesus Christ as our savior know that he is the ultimate source of peace. He's the prince of peace. At his birth, angels announced his birth with a, birth with a proclamation of peace. At the end of his earthly ministry, he proclaimed peace to his disciples. He gives true peace. Let me cite you John 14, 27, where Jesus said, peace I give you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. So let not your heart be troubled. We're encouraged many places in scripture to live in peace with each other. One that jumps to my mind is Romans 12, 18, where Paul writes, do all you can to live in peace with others. So again, there's, there's times when conflict is necessary. That's a whole different story. But so often we bring conflict into our lives that is just not appropriate, unnecessary, unhelpful. So what we're gonna do in the first four sessions, we're gonna look at my play nice in your sandbox model, the play portion is a four step model to prevent the trivial, the insignificant, the, well, I wanna say stupid, but I'm not sure I can say that, use that word. But you know what I'm talking about. I shouldn't be smiling or laughing. It's, it's not funny, but all of us know what it's like to be in, embroiled in a conflict that wasn't that important to start with, and it still isn't that important. Yet it's zapping our time, our energy, our resources, our joy. I like to say not only were they not a hill to die on, they weren't a hill to get sick on, and yet there they are. And again, I, I think you know what I'm talking about. So the play is an acronym. Each letter stands for a particular tool, tip, technique, what have you, to prevent trivial conflict. In week five, we're gonna start into the nice portion, whereas how do you resolve significant differences that you are bound to have with others at work, at home, wherever you deal with people on a regular basis? So the P in the play nice model stands for play, play, play. And hopefully you know that, hopefully you've got the worksheet in front of you. You may wanna keep that handy because I gave you a place to take some notes of some of the items that I'm gonna cover this evening. But play is so important. In fact, over the course of this eight weeks, I'm gonna be sharing with you five germs that infect, sicken, and ultimately destroy relationships. You can think of people you know who got divorced or had to leave a job or what have you, they ended a relationship. I'm gonna tell you right now, chances are the five germs that I'm gonna be sharing with you over these eight weeks are largely responsible in, in most every case. And so germ number five that destroys relationships is a lack of fun. Now I'm not one that thinks work should be all fun or life should be all fun and no work. 
but I sure don't think it should be all work and no fun. Fun is a crucial part of a healthy life of healthy relationships. 10 years ago or so, I'm guessing, I was driving along listening to the local Christian radio station and they said, all right, here's today's trivia question. They said, children do this 400 times a day, adults less than 12, what is it? Why don't I have you put in the chat box if you wanna guess real quick. I'll just pause long enough if you wanna type your answer. Children do it over 400 times a day, adults less than 12. I grabbed my phone. I knew the answer. It was laugh. And those of you who have young children in your life, maybe not on day one of their lives, but <laughs> toddlers and such, young children, they're laughing all the time. And somebody estimated 400 times a day. Now, how do they know that? Do they go around with a flip chart and count? Oh, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. I don't know how they know that. But it's true. Young children laugh frequently during the day. Adults, not so much. And that's a shame. That's a shame. Because let me share with you that laughter and play go so well together. They go so well together. And here are some health benefits of laughter and play. Are you ready? Relieves stress. Now, again, we all need some stress in our lives, but too much is not a good thing. If you're laughing and playing on a regular basis, you'll find yourself better able to deal with stress and have less stress to have to deal with. Improves brain function. Now, some of you may not need that, <clears throat> okay? I sure do. <laughs> this is the only brain I got and I'm trying to improve it every chance I get. And laughter and play help me to do that. They'll help you as well. Play helps to heal emotional wounds. Again, I'm combining laughter and play. But if you're in a damaged relationship, I'm not gonna tell you that playing together and laughing together is gonna heal everything, but you know what? It's gonna increase your odds of healing those wounds and reconciling that relationship, restoring that relationship. Again, it improves relationships. I do a lot of marriage coaching. I don't do counseling. I don't think marriages struggle because the people in them are neurotic, psychotic, or schizophrenic. Now, some are. Some are. In fact, my favorite poem is Roses are red, violets are blue, I'm schizophrenic, and so am I. You'll get that later. Most relationships are struggling because the people in them don't know how to handle relationships. They've never been taught. They've never been trained the importance of laughter and play. They don't know the five germs that have infected their relationship. So when I do relationship coaching, especially marriage coaching, I'll often recommend, hey, pick a funny movie, sit on the couch together right next to each other, arm in arm, arm around each other, and just laugh together. And it's amazing what that does to restore your good feelings towards one another. Laughter and, and play fuel imagination, help you keep you young. A guy named George Bernard Shaw made this statement. I love it. He said this, we do not stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. Huh? We don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. And that's the problem with most of you. If, if I may be some bold and I... I realize if I'm too critical of you, you won't come back next week. I'll run that risk. But I'm going to tell you one of the biggest mistakes you made in life. You grew up. You call yourself a grown-up. People ask me, Ron, where did you grow up? I say, I'm trying to do it in Farmington, New Mexico. Once you grow up, then what? Well... You stop laughing, you stop smiling. Life is all serious. And, and I'm just here to tell you, research will back me up. 
that's a mistake. Now I want to be an adult. I want to be responsible for myself. I want to be a, a contributing member of society, but I want to do that with a childlike outlook on life. And as a Christian, that's my right. That's my privilege. That's my opportunity. And I'm not even 70 yet. So I got plenty of time yet to grow up. I'm not going to be I'm not going to be 70 until clear into September. I got lots of time to grow up. And by the way, some of you are surprised to find out that I'm almost 70. You, you, I went to the doctor a couple of weeks ago and he said, Ron, you're in great shape for a man of 79. I said, doc, I'm only 69. He said, in that case, you're a wreck. Okay, bad joke. And you're not paying extra for the jokes. I'll I'll tell you that right now. But seriously, laughter, I'm I'm convinced, is what helps me to stay young and have a fresh outlook on life. So much research says that laughter and fun and play are so valuable. Let's look at work for a moment. Research says you get more productivity the more your team, your people are laughing, having fun, playing together. Productivity goes up. Job satisfaction goes up. Morale goes up. Absenteeism goes down. Turnover goes down. And again, don't take my word for it. Look up Uncle Google. Just check out humor, fun, and laughter in the workplace. You'll see the studies. And again, check it out for home as well. We need to be playing more. So I wanna share with you four tips, four, five tips on how to keep fun at the center of your relationships. The first one is the recreational enjoyment inventory. Let me pull it up, I've got it right here. If you'll just go to recreational enjoyment inventory, Dot com. This is what's going to come up. It's from Willard Harley, his organization, Marriage Builders, I believe it's called. He's the author of His Needs, Her Needs, one of the best-selling books on marriage ever. But the re recreational enjoyment inventory, it's for couples, but it can be tailored. You can alter this and use it for work teams. You can use it for families. But you'll notice there is a husband's column and a wife's column. And what you have here are, I think, seven pages of different activities, starting with, let me put my glasses on so I can tell you accurately, acting and aerobic exercise, badminton, boxing, bridge, coin collecting, oh, church services is on there, croquet, golf, ham radio, horseback riding, horseshoe pitching, jogging, judo, karate, photography. Do you hear me going from A to Z? Of different activities that a couple could do together, a family could do together, a work team could do together. And what you do with this particular one is you rate them from minus three, I don't ever wanna do that, to plus three, I'd like to do that pretty often. And so if you're doing this as a couple or a team, whatever, you come together, you compare your answers and you're looking for the sixes or the nines, if there's three of you, the twelves, you're looking for those areas that everyone said three, I'd like to do that regularly. And then you schedule them. You make the time. You don't look for the time, find the time, you make the time. It's that important to the health of your relationships that you're having fun on a regular basis. So I hope you wrote that down. Recreational enjoyment inventory, it's worth checking out. Another one is, is play the hundred item, you know, I wanna call it a game. Exercise is probably more like it, hundred item. And what you do here is, is you look back over your life what are the top 100 events that bring you joy, that, that are fond memories? I would think the birth of a child, a graduation, your wedding, a promotion, a retirement. W look back over your life and don't get hung, hung up on 100. If you come up with 25 or 50 or 75, you're not going to fail. Don't worry about it. 
but look back at the top moments of your life. And if you're doing this as a family, young children can play. They can list five or 10, depending on their age, maybe 20. But here's the beauty of it. Whenever you're ready, when people get their list, you come together and somebody starts off by calling somebody out and say, what's your number 12? They look at their list and they don't say, oh, it was, it was that trip to the Grand Canyon. No, 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 no. They go, oh, it was the trip to the Grand Canyon. Remember, we got that flat tire and it was rainy and we were just laughing. And, and then we got to the Grand Canyon and it just opened up in front of us. And, and we met those nice people. And you start reliving that memory. Are, are you hearing me? I hope you don't just talk about it. You relive it. And by doing that, you rekindle the joy the happiness associated with that memory. So don't rush it. Once everybody's pitched in and shared that memory, if it's a joint memory, if it's just yours, no. But then that person calls on somebody else. All right, what's your number 21? Or what's your number three or whatever? And they look at the list and I go, oh, that was, and then they relive that memory, that episode. I'm telling you, couples ought to do this on a regular basis. Once a week, I don't know. Once a month, I don't care. But, but remember the joyful memories because relationships are struggling right now. There's a lot of tension. You don't need me to tell you that. A lot of friction, even before COVID, you add COVID to that and a lot of families struggling. We need to remember, wait a minute, there's been a lot of good times in the past. There are still gonna be good times now and even more in the future. That 100 item exercise is a wonderful exercise to keep fun and laughter and play in the forefront of your relationship. And by the way, again, if you have questions about any of these, put them in the chat. Rod and Sue, I know, are monitoring the chat. I'm not, it's over there, I see it. It's over there to my right, but I'm not looking. But if you have questions, we're gonna set aside time at the end to deal with those questions. Oh, 10 index cards, where's my props? Here we go get index cards. You can get basic index cards or you can get fancy. You can get the, the different color index cards, the bigger ones, whichever you want to do. But here's how this works. Dad takes 10 index cards and on one index card, he writes down something he'd like to do as a family. Or again, you can, you can adjust this. As a work team, every employee has a, a, a deck of 10. So in the family, illustration, mom's going to have a deck of 10. The kids can have a deck of five. But here's how it works. On one index card, you write down one activity that you would like to do as a family. If you're doing it as a couple, some of them can involve the kids, maybe only two or three. Most of them should be just you as a couple. All right, let me see. It just popped into my head. I got to say this. I, I did divorce mediation for 29 years. Hard, hard, hard work. And I can't begin to tell you how many couples said, well, we decided to put the kids first and we lost the marriage. That's the biggest mistake you can make. And I sit in condemnation of no one, please. But if you want to give your kids the best gift you can give them, give them a together home that they can grow up in and that they can come back to with their children when they're adults. You can argue with me if you want, but I'll listen. But as Ricky Ricardo used to say, you'll have some splaining to do. It's important for couples to have fun together. Find a sitter that you trust. You leave the kids at home. You go out and you focus on the marriage. That's the best gift you can give to your children. So anyway, back to the cards. So everybody has a deck of 10 or five, however many, but here's how we started. Dad, let's start with you. You go to mom's deck of 10. And again, if you're single, do this with siblings, do this with your friends that you associate on a regular basis. This is not, not just for families, this is for anyone. We are social beings, we need to be having fun. You go to the other person's deck of 10, you pull out a card that says, oh, you wanna go for a picnic. I tell you what, don't make any plans for Sunday afternoon. I'll make sure the kids are taken care of. We're gonna go for a picnic. Their idea, you're making it happen. Then the next week or two, they go to your deck. They pull Owen out. Oh, you wanna go for a walk down by the river? 
tell you what, don't make any plans for Sabbath afternoon. We're going to go for a walk by the river, block off the time. I'll make sure we're going to make this happen. Their idea, you're making it happen. Do you see the beauty of that? Now, you might pull a card that says, I want to go on a cruise to Mexico. Well, great. Don't make any plans for Sunday afternoon. We're going, no, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. Don't make any plans for Sunday afternoon. We're going to spend a couple of hours doing a Google search on cruises to Mexico. We're going to decide what kind of budget we need. We're going to decide the best times of year to go. We're going to decide what cruise line we want. We're going to start planning that trip. So if it's a large expedition, a large experience, just break it up into chunks and make notes. Start a file. Mexico cruise. So it will, it's much more likely to happen, but then put that card back in, pull one out that is more doable in the near future. That's called the deck of 10. I love that idea. Two more. How are we doing for time? I think we're doing good. High, low, learn. High, low, learn. This is so simple. You, you know, you ask your children, what'd you do in school today? Nothing. What'd you learn today? Nothing. That is so frustrating. Play high, low, learn. What was the high point of your day today? What was the low point of your day today? What'd you learn today? And everybody participates. And you don't have to do this every day, but in a family setting, why not? Why not? What was the high point? What, what happened today that, that you celebrate, that we can celebrate with you? What was the low point? What, what happened today that you just as soon hadn't happened that we can commiserate with you about? What'd you learn today? And everybody participates and feeds into that. It, it's building connection. It's building understanding of each other. It's building relationships, healthy relationships. All right, one more. Learn to laugh at yourself. If you have not learned to laugh at yourself yet, you have shut off a great source of humor. So I'm going to tell you one of mine. Now, by the way, my tip is to share embarrassing moments. Embarrassing moments that people can laugh with you, not at you. I don't ever like to embarrass somebody to where they're the, you know, we're all laughing at them. That's not fun for any of us. And we've all seen it happen, unfortunately. I'm telling those stories about those stories that we can all laugh together about. For example, I hiked the Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon is about five hours away from me. I'm in Northwest New Mexico. It's one of my favorite places on the planet. And, and when you come out of the Grand Canyon, you're tired, you're sore, you stink. And all you wanna do is take a shower. And so this one particular trip with my friends, Randy and Don, we came out, we had done a 30 mile loop. We had camped a couple of times. And, and again, I was tired and sore and sweaty. and Oh, the thought of that shower was just so wonderful. And, and, and I remembered that they were coin-operated showers. They took quarters. I didn't remember how many, so I got $5 worth of quarters because I wasn't taking any chances. And, and so we drive over to the showers, and, and Randy and I go in. My friend Don, he, he's kind of a neat freak. Now, some of you may be that way. That's fine. He he wanted to put everything away first. I said, you're crazy. I'm going in. And, and so I'm in the shower and, and 50 cents was like five minutes. It wasn't a bad deal at all, but it felt so good. I put in another 50 cents. I was a big spender. And, and, and at this point in the story, I'm bent over and the water's hitting my back and it, oh, it just felt so good. It felt so good. And just then I noticed Don's legs in the next stall. He had come in while I was showering and you know, I was just in such a playful mood. I just reached under that divider and I just pinched him right on the leg and he didn't say anything and that's all right. And, and until about 30 seconds later when he called out, hey, Randy, do you want your keys? And, and I, I knew two things right off the bat. Number one, it was Don's voice. Number two, it was not coming from that next stall. <laughs> and, and I tell this story and people say, well, who was it in the next? I didn't stick around to find out. I set the Guinness world record for shutting off a shower, toweling, dressing, drying, and booking it out of a place that you've ever seen. Now that's a funny story. And I don't mind sharing that. It gets people laughing and I laugh right along with them. Learn 
to laugh at yourself. Share those stories with each other. Let us laugh with you, not at you. And you're going to find healthier relationships. So I think with that, Sue, that's about all I had. I got a few Bible texts I want to throw in at the end. But Rod, Sue, who's handling questions? I think, Sue, you are, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, so do you have some questions you would like to ask uh, Ron? You can those in the chat or you can raise your hand too if you go to uh, and you want to just share it out loud uh, down at the bottom of your screen you'll see it says reactions if you click on that you should have it where it says raise hand and that'll just put up a little hand in the corner of your screen and I'll see it and I can call on you to ask your question I have a few minutes so um, don't be shy Does anyone have a question for us right now I can, I can start off here. Um, do you have some ideas for inexpensive or free dates that you can do on a tiny budget? Suggestions for, 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 for people who are, you know, mm -hmm. money is tight. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I used to, I, I used to have a huge list. So I know that's something you could easily Google. Uh, and so I'm going to, I'm going to deflect that question, but encourage you to do some research, cheap dates. I know the ARPs, Dave and Claudia ARP, I, I met them at a conference I used to go to. They wrote 10 great dates to re-energize your marriage. They wrote 10 great dates for empty nesters. They have some great ideas for dates that are meaningful and they don't have to be expensive. You, you go out and you're discussing your relationship, but in a fun way, not a, oh, great, we gotta do this kind of way. Mm -hmm. Dave and Claudia Arp, here's another thought. You know, childcare can get expensive after a while. I, Definitely. I, I remember what I used to charge for babysitting and I'd get laughed at for, <laughs> that's like for 10 minutes now, what I used to get paid an hour. But here's what I suggest. Find another couple. Again, this is for families now. Find another couple that has children about the same age as yours. And this is also probably post-COVID. But you agree to watch their kids while they go out on a date. And then they watch your kids while you go out on a date. So your kids have the benefit of interacting with other kids and having fun. And you have reliable childcare at no expense to you whatsoever. So Great that, idea. that's one thought that I have on that. Yeah, thank you. Um, what, um, okay, I'm a single person and I work long hours uh, at my job. What are some ways that I can connect with friends to have some fun? Yeah. yeah. Some of you might know the name Jerry Page. Jerry Page was my first pastor in Cortez, Colorado. And, and we, we just made a superstar out of him. He went up to the Rocky Mountain Conference, and then he became president of a conference in California, and then one in Pennsylvania. And then he just, I think, recently retired or is going to retire from the, the general conference. A busy, busy man. Busy, busy man. And he told me years ago that he, every month he would go to his calendar and he'd just take certain days and he'd write F on them, F, family. So people would call him up, hey, Jerry, are you, are you available this Thursday? He'd go to his calendar, he'd see the letter F, he'd say, oh man, I'm not, let's pick another day. He didn't have to tell him, hey, I'm going to be with family. I'm going to, I can't be with you that day. A single person, same thing. Just write down me day or play day or friend day. Schedule time in your calendar. Because if not, you're going to work yourself to social death, if not physical death. I hope I've made the point tonight that play is so important. It is worth scheduling. And, and we sometimes need to do that because otherwise, that's why I'm I'm so grateful for the seventh day Sabbath. How, how do people, how do people get by when they just work, 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 and they and nonstop? I mean, I used to do it. I guess I thought I was living, but we need to be intentional about rest, 
and about play. It can't be all about nonstop work and being a grown up. Does, uh, yeah, that's, that's great. Does the, uh, um, does play need to be active? And, and how often would you say is a healthy amount of time? Uh, are we playing stump the host? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a great question. Does play need to be active? You know, I don't think so. I'll, I'll tell you what jumped to my mind and you may wanna write these down. There are five movies that I recommend to anybody. You know, some of you have heard of these. Flywheel is the first one, Flywheel, Facing the Giants, Fireproof, Courageous, War Room, and Overcomer. Those are my five, <laughs> okay, six. Some of you have heard of these movies. They're put out by the Kendrick brothers. They are amazing movies. God honoring, faithful movies that, that I promise you, they will get you laughing, they will get you crying, and everywhere in between. They're amazingly powerful movies. Flywheel, Facing the Giants, and I recommend watching them in this order. You don't have to. Flywheel, Facing the Giants, Fireproof, Courageous, which is my favorite, War Room, although. That's my favorite too. And then Overcomer. And I think again, as I said earlier, if you'll just sit together, sit in the same room and laugh at the same time, there's something that happens that connects you. So I don't think play needs to be active. Now, while all stereotypes will break down at some point for the male of the species, yeah, the more active, the better the more active. For the female of the species, the more connected, the more communicative, the better. So look for ways that combine both. Does play always have to be active? No. Should it often be active? Yes. And how much time? You know, the thought that came to my mind, Zig Ziglar used to talk about a 23-hour deodorant. He thought that everybody's entitled to some alone time once in a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, just make sure it's regular. Look at your weekly schedule. And, and, and I'm just throwing this off the top of my head. I don't have research or experience to back this up. But, you know, I would think as much as physical exercise, at least two or three times a week at, at a minimum, that you ought to be scheduling fun. And it doesn't, every time doesn't have to be hours and hours. Schedule a 15 minute block, a 30 minute block, whatever. Go out and have lunch together, break it up. Again, I think we can go to restaurants again in some states, some locales. But if fun and play are not a priority, they get pushed to the side. Again, when I was doing my divorce mediation, I'd ask people, when's the last time you went on a date? They say, what's that? I said, when's the last time you went away for a weekend together? They said, what are you, crazy? Well, yeah. So when's the last time you went away for a weekend? When's the last time you took a week and just said, you know what, we're going away. We're going on a cruise. We're just getting away for a week because we need it, because we deserve it, because it's vital to our overall health individually and the health of our relationship we don't do that so much. And again, cruises are not that expensive. There's, there's different ways to have fun on a budget. Make it a priority. Do your research. You'll find them. Sounds good. Thanks, Ron. You bet. We have a couple of prizes we want to give away tonight. Um, I have all of your names here. And I thought a red bucket sand pail would be a good and fitting thing to hold all of your names. So I'm going to mix them up and I'm going to draw one. And this first name is going to receive one of Ron's books. Play nice in your sandbox at home. Okay. All right. And um, this person is Gary Cayley. Is, um, is Gary on the Zoom tonight? I know not everyone could make it. Um, let me just look here. 
Gary, if you are here, please speak up. Uh, I am not seeing him here tonight. That's unfortunate. We'll go ahead and we'll draw another name. And this is for Ron's book, Josephine Tan. Josephine, are you with us tonight? I am. Oh, oh good. <laughs> wonderful. Congratulations, Josephine. Oh, thank you so much, Sue. We will, we will. This is this is Ron's gift to you. And uh, we will make we'll put it in the mail to you. Thank so. you, Ron. Appreciate it. You're welcome, Josephine. Enjoy. I will. Now, this next name that I draw will be um, whoever's name I pick. We will send you a list of resources you can choose from. And there'll be items that kids would enjoy, couples would enjoy, families, men, uh, women. So you can pick the item, uh, but once we'll draw your name and then we'll send you an email with the, the, uh, the list of resources. So this will be your choice. And the person here that we'll get to pick is Annabelle Albuja. Annabelle, are you with us tonight? Yeah, so I'm here. Great. Oh, right. wonderful. Okay, Annabelle, you'll be getting an email from me and uh, you'll get to choose one of the resources. Sweet, so, thank you. Welcome, all right. Well, we're just really glad that you all could join us tonight. Uh, next Tuesday night, we'll be meeting again at six o'clock. We'll be sending out a link. Um, I'm hoping to, planning to send it out um, on Monday, the day before, so you'll have time to print off the handouts that um, you would like to have. And uh, for those of you, I put in um, in the chat the files of uh, for the adult handout for and also for the uh, youth handout and a worksheet and a, a just a a uh, instruction sheet for parents how they can adapt the youth handout for younger children, elementary age or teens. Um, where hoping that it will be a springboard to discussion and open communication with your children and so that you can really get a window into how, how they're feeling and thinking. So um, we will, that's also in the, in the chat tonight and I'll send it out next week when you get the Zoom link, you'll also get the handouts for session two, the adult and the youth handout as well. So we're just really glad you could join us tonight and uh, we look forward to seeing you um, next Tuesday night. And if you, have, um, if you have some friends that you think would enjoy uh, this, please just have them uh, write Cheryl Barker, C. Barker at ks-ne.org to register and then we'll, have, we'll be able to send them a link. So um, and, we just and think, and yes. Before you close, I have a few Bible texts I want to leave with people. Okay, just sure. That I think back up what I've said. And again, God created humor. <laughs> he, cre he gave us the ability to laugh and to play. And I think he expects us to use it. John 10.10, 10, the very first verse I ever memorized Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, have it to the full, some translations say. And again, life is hard at times. We know that, especially in recent days, recent months, I should say. But life is still great. And we as Americans need to be remembering all our many blessings and we can laugh in the midst of difficulties Sometimes it's harder than others. I get that. But please don't ever forget, Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Solomon wrote in Proverbs 15, 13, a glad heart makes a happy face. A glad heart makes a happy face. And then again, he wrote in 17, Proverbs 17, 22, one that you're all familiar with, a cheerful heart is good medicine. It's good medicine. So again, I want to join with Rod and Sue and thank you folks for being here this evening. Sue, I'll turn it back to you to close out, but, but folks, please 
Look for opportunities this week to have fun in your important relationships. We're going to be back next week with the L from Play Nice, and it's a good one. I'll look forward to seeing you then. Thank you, Ron. Let's uh, bow our heads for prayer. Father, we thank you for uh, the opportunity to learn and to grow. And Father, we just ask that you will um, help us remember the tools that were shared tonight that we can put into use into our lives to make our communications with each other uh, positive and helpful and uplifting. And uh, may we just learn how to play uh, in the ways that you've designed us to play and to enjoy the abundant life that you've provided for us. And we thank you, Lord, for all your blessings in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you all. We will see you next Tuesday, April 13 at 6 p.m. for Life CPR. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.